questions about people going saying they might go to prison or they're going to prison and uh, what to expect and how to survive and all this so that's what I'm going to be talking about today I'm actually doing a reaction on a video that talks about how to survive in prison so if you're new here you like prison content subscribe share comment uh, I always try to answer all the comments let's get into this see what we got here it's called how to survive inside prison the first thing you might think when you ask yourself how you might survive prison is what prison are we talking about not all prisons are made that's true it, it really depends on the prison you're going to um, like the max prisons is going to be a lot different than the low-level prisons. Mostly in low-level prisons, because at least the ones I was in, um, when I got my date and they dropped my level, custody level, or um, um, they're mostly fights. You know, maximum security prisons there seems to be more uh, respect, but. There's fights there too, but there's also, uh, you know, you can get poked up there. Made equal, and you could say there's a big difference from life in Thailand's infamous Bang Quang Central Prison, aka the Bangkok Hilton, and a progressive place of containment in the country of Sweden. We might also note Dostoevsky's famous. Yeah, you know the. I'm not trying to put anybody down in uh, Europe, but the. Or, you know, say, you know, maybe to those people there that they are bad, but uh, I can't see them, any of the prisons in Europe being as uh, bad as the ones in the U.S. I mean, maybe in England and Ireland and places like that. Famous line. The degree of civilization in a society can be judged by entering its prisons. We've all likely watched TV episodes featuring the world's worst lockups, but of course, we can't do a show on how to survive in all the various types of prisons in the world. Today, we'll talk mostly about U.S. prisons, right, the US. good, the bad, and the very ugly. Welcome to this episode of the infographic show, How to Survive in Prison. So, you've been handed a prison sentence and have survived jail. It's your first time inside, and you are no doubt worried about how you'll get along. You watch the movies depicting daily violence and a hierarchy of men living out a dog-eat-dog -dog lifestyle. You are far from being a hardened criminal. Let's say you're in a large joint such as California's San Quentin prison, a place you've likely seen on TV at some point. On your first day, you'll be booked, and you'll go through what is called an admission and orientation interview. This will decide what part... I'm not sure how the California prisons work. Um... On, on that aspect, but um, in Missouri, when you're sentenced, at least on the state, they send you to Fulton. When I went, we had to go to Fulton. It was called uh, uh, Fulton Diagnostic and uh, Reception Center. Now they got several of them throughout the state, three or four, I think. But it's a prison, and it, they determine what really it determines what prison you're going to you know um, they check everything on you do your medical your education your um, uh, they just do all these tests on you and they turn determine what prison to send you to and a lot of it has to do with what you were charged with and stuff too part of the 
prison you'll be housed in and if you have any special medical needs. You'll also be given clothing and other stuff like hygiene items. Yep, you'll have to strip and do that bending forward and coughing motion so that... Yeah, um... Every prison you go to, you're going to get strip searched. You're going to have to get naked. And, uh... The way they do it is, uh... They, uh... Have you lift your sack? They have you uh, squat and cough, uh, not bend over like he was saying. Um, you squat and cough, lift your feet up, lift your hands up, your arms up, run your hand through your hairs, open your mouth, all this. And that is a strip search, at least in Missouri. So that guards know you're not hiding things in your posterior crevice. You'll just have to get used to this, so accept everything you're asked to do. Survival tip number one, which should be obvious, is do what you are told and don't make a fuss. Obviously, if you're being abused, it's a different matter. As we said... Do what you're told and don't make a fuss unless you're being abused. Um, you know, some people may um, call a strip search being abused, but... Uh, you know, many times the guards don't like doing the strip searches. You know, some of them do. They get a sadistic, uh, uh, I guess they think it's funny or something, but uh, many don't like doing them. Said, you're no gangbanger, and you're not a former cop, sex offender, or police informant. You don't need to be kept away from certain people. You're now in your new home or housing unit. How are you feeling? Well, the question was asked on Cora about first day prison experiences, and the top post on one thread started with one word, terrifying. The person added, I've never felt so alone in my life. My first week in jail. That's true. Uh, now, I actually remember that uh, question um, in prison. I think I answered that one too myself. But uh, when I first got to prison, the Missouri State Penitentiary, I. Uh, I was terrified, you know, I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. Um, and you do feel alone, you know. Uh, I think people who come to prison that already have friends in prison, they don't feel as alone because, you know, they have people they can talk to and stuff. But when you, if you're somebody like me going to prison, you uh, don't know nobody, you know. So, um, th that's true. I had done in total solitary confinement. This was like the opposite of that, and yet I still felt more alone. Before we get to the matter of survival relating to violence, you have to figure out how to accept you'll be spending the next few years in this place, or another similar place, and how to keep... Next, spend the next few years? I spent 29 years. You know, if you're just spending a few years in a low-level camp, you're in a low-custody-level camp, you know, and, uh, I mean... I guess things could happen there, but uh, uh, you, you just spend a few years, you know, and um, you don't have to, you may have to defend yourself or something, but uh, it's not, uh, it's nothing like doing uh, a good portion of your life in prison. To keep yourself from not going crazy. Believe it or not, a lot of people will tell you that meditation is one thing that can help you get through prison. After all, there has been people who've talked about uh, they meditate to get through prison, but really, to keep your mind sane is uh, stay occupied. You know, stay busy doing something. That's what the old heads, the old school uh, convicts always told me. You know, don't think about the outside 24-7, you know. They used to tell me, um, it used to be a saying in prison, um, do the time, don't let the time do you. If you let the time do you, it's going to destroy you mentally. Well, close your 
eyes and be in the present with only your breathing to concentrate on, and in some respects, you could be anywhere. For a few minutes or more, you are not really in prison. In some places, you can actually join a prison contemplative program, and if that's available, we advise you to join. If you read about these programs, you'll find that those who join them are less likely to be harmed, inflict self-harm, take drugs, and have more balanced emotions and even a heightened self-awareness. We can't express enough how much meditation will help you get through your sentence. I've never seen a group where people were meditating, you know, maybe that's in the other states or something. Um, you're less likely to stay away from all the bad stuff it said, and you're less likely to harm yourself or others. Um, yeah, I've never seen that. Um, I've, it's always been individuals that would meditate. Sentence. Reuters wrote about such a program in one U.S. prison. Men in the meditation group reported significantly larger reductions in perceived stress, anxiety, depression, disassociation, and sleep disturbances than the inmates who didn't participate in this program. And yep, even the tough guys sometimes learn that shutting down your busy mind a couple of times a day will keep the demons away. Okay. I just kind of disagree with that. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, I remember um, when they uh, said I had IBS and uh, they told me it was caused by stress. And uh, they said, why are you stressed out? And I said, but it's obvious I'm in prison, you know. I have to deal with all this. But um, I've never... Um, like I said, I've never seen a program like this where there's group classes, but uh, maybe it uh, maybe it does work. But uh, I've never, I just never seen it. Okay, you're going in the right direction, but meditating won't keep bullies away. If you've ever spoken to someone who has done a lot of time, they will likely tell you that to stay out of trouble, do not act like a tough guy right from the start. You see, even if that's right, don't. Don't come in there acting like a tough guy, you know, you <laughs> somebody's going to try you. Um, you kind of don't want to, it's hard to do, but you don't want to act uh, scared if possible either because, you know, that brings attention to you too. And, uh, but, yeah, don't, don't come in there acting like a tough guy. I mean, if you are a tough guy, go for it I guess but I mean trust me somebody's going to try you and if you are tough there will no doubt be someone tougher than you if right. not you can always fight with four strangers or someone who has come at you from behind on the prison yard with a shiv in hand if you want to stay safe yeah, that's just kind of weird what he said though you know they if you're a new guy um, they're most likely not going to try to come up behind you with a, uh, a piece, you know. Uh, they're just going to approach you from straight on, you know. And without a piece, you know, they're just going to try to pressure you, maybe, you know. There's no reason for them to come up right behind you, not even knowing you with a piece. Poker. If you want to stay safe, keep your head down. That's not always easy because prison can be a hostile place. One person explained his first walk to his cell with other new inmates in San Quentin. Arms are hanging out the cells, holding mirrors, middle fingers from other... I can't really say that was um, what happened to me. Um, I mean, there was people looking to see the new people coming in. <coughs> Excuse me. But... And it, you always have people with mirrors sticking out, but it wasn't like they was just, you know, some of them was already out on the walk and stuff. Others, trash is flying down from the, trash is flying down from the upper tiers, yelling and screaming the most horrible things. It's not exactly welcoming. 
He said he heard shouts directed at him with the words, Fudge you, I'm going to fudging stab you, let me see your butthole, you are going to die. We have of course used fudge. I was never really told all of that when I first got there. Um, I did have uh, somebody come by and tell me, um, be ready because, you know, there's, there's people waiting to, to test me, you know. So, but they never, <laughs> I didn't walk down the walk and all this was being said to me. You know, it was just mainly just people looking, you know, curious, you know. It almost sounds like it's something out of a movie to me, but um, I guess in some prisons they do do that. Fudge to replace a harsher sounding expletive. Prisoners are not generally averse to breaching strictures of formal polite speech. You are, rightly, fudging terrified as a newbie walking down that busy floor to your cell, but just keep your head down and try to look calm. Look as though this scene means absolutely nothing to you. Don't try to laugh to look cool, as that is only... Yeah, you don't want to... He said keep your head down. No, you don't keep your head down. You, you stay aware of your surroundings at all time. You know, keep keep your eyes out. It doesn't mean you get in somebody else's business and you don't look into cells as you're walking by them. You know, that could get you in trouble. Um, but keep if you're walking down a walk, just keep walking straight ahead, looking straight ahead, but keep your head up. And uh, like he said, don't laugh as if everything's cool or, or anything. Or, you know, you just want to just walk to yourself, you know. Only inviting trouble. Even do a bit of meditative walking. Now you have arrived at your cell. You might be sharing the cell with someone, and it is of the utmost importance that you two get along. Remember, he was there before you, and you should respect his space and help clean the place. As one British guy who wrote a book on prison survival advises, having a sense of humor goes a long way in prison. Your life will be so much easier if you can help the other guy in the cell and others in the prison have better lives. When you have a... A cellie, as we call them, people say cellmate, roomy, bunky. Um, you're not always going to get along with them, you know. Um, I've had people I got along with swell in the yard, you know, great, but had them as cellies, didn't get along with them. Um, but you do, you know, don't leave a mess or everything, you know. Um, it's both of you guys are cells. You guys got to take care of it. Um, be respectful of his property, his things. Don't touch his things uh, unless he gives you permission. And even then, you know, I had a uh, cell. He told me one time, we was out in the wing. He says, uh, hey, uh, you going to the cell? I said, yeah, I'm running up there for a minute. He goes, uh, hey, grab a, um, a thing of chili. Out of my locker, I said uh, I wouldn't do it. You know, I told him I said I'm not getting in your locker, and uh, he couldn't understand why. You know, he, yeah, we're cool and everything, but I'm not getting in his locker. If something comes up missing, guess who he's gonna look at? But yeah, it's good. He says have a sense of humor. That's um, a good thing to have. You know. Um, if you, if you both are laughing and cutting up and you cool with one another, it helps time go by faster, you know? By occasionally making them laugh. Now you are there and settled. We've already told you not to break prison rules, but there are also unofficial inmate rules. One former U.S. prisoner writes that it's not a good thing to get too friendly with the prison guards at the start, as people might think you're a snitch. Snitching in prison is a huge no-no, and you must... Yeah, um... You see somebody, we call them Jeff, uh, people who hang around the guards all the time talking to them. Uh, he's Jeffing with the guards. Doesn't mean they're uh, snitching, but at the same time, you know, what are we to expect, you know? We don't know what you're talking to him about. 
it's always good if you're talking to a guard to have somebody else there with you. You know, don't talk to him alone. Um, yeah, if you're just hanging around the guards all day, the guards ain't going to protect you either. You know, they'll break up altercations and stuff, but they're not going to protect you. You know, something could happen right next to a guard. must remember that some prisoners are waiting for any excuse to beat the hell out of someone. Don't give anyone that excuse. If you get labeled a snitch, your life will be hell, and you might have to get moved to protective custody. So, from the start, don't act tough, have a sense of humor if possible, and be polite to other prisoners. There protective custody if the prison has it. Uh, it was only like a couple years before I got out that South Central Correctional Center got a, a PC in it. They used like uh, one wing of the whole SPC, gave them their own yard and stuff. Um, but you know, going to PC could be uh, bad too in some ways because let's say you go to PC and you end up in another prison, you know, they transfer you or something and you get out, you, you, you're on the yard there, somebody's going to know. Sooner or later, somebody's going to say, hey man, at this other prison, he was in PC, and they're going to think that, why were you in P PC? What did you do to get in PC? You must have a bad case. You must be ratting on people. You know, it's just, it's a bad, bad stigma. That they, there are some yeah. other things you should be careful about. Some folks might be looking to take advantage of you. If at all possible, try not to borrow stuff in prison. If you have cash, don't tell people about it. Don't start asking people why they are in prison. Try to stay away from... Um, yeah, don't borrow from people when you first get to prison. Because, um, <laughs> you know, they can use that. Uh, no, I don't want that back. You know, when you try to pay them back, you know, I don't want that back. I want something else. So don't borrow from people, you know. Um, don't just be giving things out to people because, you know, a lot of people in prison, you give them like a cigarette or something, and you're new. Uh, they may take advantage of it and want more and more, you know. The, the you know, you give them an inch, they take a mile thing. Uh, if uh, later on, once you get established and stuff, you get to know people, then then you might uh, give somebody something or something, you know. Or even then, be careful about borrowing, you know. Uh, uh, they have a store man, I've talked about this before, and uh, it's always with interest. You get something from him, he wants, you pay him back, he wants it back with interest, and you you have to pay him back. I mean, uh, he's gonna want his money. So, make sure that you're able to pay the person back. You know, don't go in debt. I've always said don't go in debt. Uh, Stay away from uh, gambling and anything that could get you in a wreck. Away from drugs, heroin might ease the day, but it quickly takes back everything it gives. Getting caught with drugs will get you more time, and borrowing drugs can lead to a life of pain. Despite what you have seen on TV, one former prisoner writes, avoid clicking up or joining a gang. For the most part, the only way out of a gang is dying. One way to help with this is by joining a program. If you can study, study. If you can get books from the prison library, then when will you ever have a better chance to educate yourself? Read and return to society. You said don't uh, join a gang, you know. Um, in Missouri, you don't have to join a gang. He um, says don't click up. It's, it's like a natural thing, though. After a while, after you've been there for a while, established, you start hanging around people. Like I had people I worked out with. I, um, you know, there's people I hung around with in the wing. Usually, some of the same people, but it's just going to become a natural thing that you start hanging around people. So uh, just don't click up. Um, 
I'm not really going with, you know, you can't stay alone your whole time, you know, unless you stay in your cell, you know, most of the time, and um, I didn't do my time like that, I worked out, I did go to the library, as they mentioned, um, from time to time I read a lot, but <laughs> I can't see, I personally couldn't have done my, my time staying, my whole time in the cell. You're you're gonna get out, do things, and you're eventually just gonna get to know people and hang around people. You know. A better man. Another former prisoner on the same forum writes that one word should be remembered in prison, and that is the word respect. That goes for doing things like changing the channel on the TV or even picking up a pair of dumbbells. If in doubt, ask those around you if they are okay with what you're doing. You don't have. Well, some prisons, you know, they got the prisoners are not allowed to have uh, uh, TVs in their cells. And I think feds, you can't have them in your cell. But in Missouri, we could have our own TVs, so that really wasn't a problem. Unless, uh, you know, if you go to prison, you know, and you ain't got a TV or something, um, it might not be a good idea to change your uh, cell his TV while he's gone. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as far as the weight's going, if somebody's working out, just don't cut in there and just start using the weights they're using, you know, just say, hey, can I get this after you? Most times they'll say, yeah. You know, uh, or they sometimes they may say, well, I already said this other guy could get it next, you know. But you just get in line, you know, for whatever uh, machine. They took the free weights out in prison, so they ain't got dumbbells like this guy was talking about anymore. They took them out in the um, 90s. So it's all, all machine weights. So just get in where you fit in, you know, as they say. You don't have to sound weak, just polite. Speaking about dumbbells, now's your chance to get in shape. Have a regular workout routine, and with your reading programs, meditation, and working out, you'll leave prison a better person in some ways. All seems to be going well. You have a decent roomie, and you're getting clever and fit. But as philosopher John Paul Sartre once said, hell is other people. You've tried to be respectful, but as one former prisoner put it, the occasional bully will try to push you out of your comfort zone. It's just like high school. Mistakes are a trifle more painful. What you Yeah, you always... You always have um, people in prison that's looking for trouble, people in prison that like to get in trouble. But you also have like people who can't handle it no more, and they may uh, just start something with you just because you know their mind's not right, or they may have a debt and they want an excuse to. Uh, they're trying to get to the hole. So they start something with you so they can get put in the hole. And they usually do this in front of the um, guards. It's called a check-in move. You know, trying to get the PC. What should you do in prison if someone steals from you, disrespects you, and tries to physically hurt you? You will have heard on countless TV shows that if you don't attempt to fight back in some situations, that person or other persons might try to hurt you or take advantage of you again. Hell, it's not so bad getting a black eye or a busted lip. You might not win, but fight back. Don't ever go looking for trouble. But if you can't get away from it, don't tell the guards and don't just lie down. Yeah, he's right. Don't. You get something stolen from you, and you feel disrespected, somebody's trying to push you around or something, don't take it. Don't back down. If you back down, it's never going to stop. It's just going to get worse. So, you know, do what you got to do. Handle your business. Like I said, the, um, don't go tell the guards, though, because that'll make it worse, too. After one fight, it's usually easier to defend yourself in other fights. This, this doesn't mean you have to get into fights. Many prisoners serve their sentence without having to scrap. Okay, you're getting continual grief from one person or several. He said many prisoners have served their uh, prison sentences without having to scrap. 
Um, that might be true in some of the lower level prisons, but uh, you know, like I would say that that would be untrue, especially for some place like the walls. I don't know anybody who went through that without getting into something, whether they meant to or didn't mean to. You know, the trouble will find you. People. Do you really have to join a gang? Well, you saw how that turned out for Edward Norton in the movie American History X. The website Inmate Survival writes, Fitting in with society is hard, but to be accepted by your prison mates is even harder. Ouch. The website tells us that of course you'll be identified by your race, whether you're Asian, African American, Spanish, Native American, or Caucasian. Now, as we said, all prisons are different, but even if you're in a place like San Quentin, which is infamous for gangs, you don't necessarily have to join one. On the downside, if you are continually extorted by one, things can get hard for you. How can you avoid not joining a gang if this happens? One former convict with a YouTube channel called Prison Talk explains how this can be done. The host, who spent 10 years in federal prison in the US, tells us, I did my whole bid, I never joined a gang. However, he adds that just to make doing his time better, he did hang out with a certain group he got along with. Prison life can be lonely and scary, so it might Yeah, you know, um, they don't have the, um, you have to join out here in Missouri. Um, I heard that places like California, it's like that. But uh, I can't say for sure. I've never done time in California. But it's not like that here in Missouri. You don't have to. So it might be better to join what we might call an unofficial gang. You might just call them friends. He explains that if things turn ugly, he would indeed help those friends, and in turn, they would help him. If you roll with certain people, you will just have to help them if things take a turn for the worse. This doesn't mean looking for trouble. It's just self-preservation. Prison Talk tells us you do, to an extent, have to get involved, even if you don't want to get involved. It's inevitable. In conclusion, get some friends, but know that those friends might one day need your help. This is life on the streets, in school, in the office. But you certainly don't need to join an official gang. Another thing we might add is that before you make friends, know who they are. Find out if they are gang members or even if they are perhaps sketchy. Be smart and take your time when latching onto people. Your reading and the self-awareness you gain from meditation can help with making you a... Yeah, you don't just want to start hanging out with anybody, you know, um, stay away from those that may have messed out, messed up cases, uh, I mean, because there won't be too many of those on the yard anyway, but um, just hanging out with those could give you a, a bad name. Um, somebody that's always in trouble, um, if you're the type of person that don't want to get in trouble, don't... Uh, hang around those people, you know, um, but, um, in Missouri anyway, I'm willing to bet that sooner or later you're, you're going to get in trouble. You may even get rolled up for something you didn't even do. Yeah, it's, it happens, you know, so, that's what, at least in Missouri, yeah, that's the way it is, you know a better judge of people. Unfortunately, as many former prisoners will tell you, like life outside of prison, life inside can just be unfair. Yes, you can have a hellish time even if you have done as we said in this show. A researcher at Harvard University tells us prison is a sexual jungle and there are many predators looking for weak prey. The group Stop Prisoner Rape says around 200,000 men each year worldwide are raped while doing time. Often, that's 200,000 world wide uh, um, that's a that's a lot <laughs> even for wor worldwide that seems like it's a, a lot per year you know Men are treated like animals and they become animals. Others are mean to the core. It's also hard to get help because being a snitch gets you in more trouble. What can you do? Well, sometimes you might not have a choice but to ask to be moved. The Marshall Project even says a good amount of sexual assaults are committed by the guards. So unfortunately, there is no easy way out. 
One inmate interviewed while in prison said if you appear to be weak and they think they can take advantage of you, that's where things start to go wrong. Another... That's true. I mean, if people prey on the weak, um, uh, I mean, they ain't going to uh, go after people that's going to stand up to them. Uh, and, they, and that they know they will stand up to them. Um, so if they think that you're weak and they and they can have their way with you, you know, or take stuff from you, uh, they will. You know, that's just the way it is. It, I mean, prison's not a, a, a bunch of people in the, in there for being in the church choir. Another inmate said, don't shower naked, wear your underwear. Another said, staying safe is not snitching. However, if you really have no way out, you just... Don't shower naked, shower in your underwear. Um, <laughs> like that's going to stop, you know. Uh, I've never seen anything like that happen in a shower. People get, you know, taken in the shower, but... Uh, I never even heard of it. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I just never heard of it, you know. Um, the, the showers and the modern prisons in the Missouris are set up that everybody can see into them. They're in the wing with the cells. They're, they're not all in a separate area. So it would be real, and the guards are making rounds over so often, so it would be real hard for somebody to do that. And uh, the only place I, I can see it really happening is in a place where uh, the showers are off away from uh, the, where everybody could see, and that um, maybe the old walls, you know, it could have happened there, but I've never even heard of it there. Uh, things like this usually happen in the cell or in blind spots, you know. You just might have to tell. Sometimes you just can't fight five men at once, no matter how tough you are. Sometimes you just gotta get away. That said, with friends and a healthy lifestyle and doing all the things we've told you to do, it's unlikely you'll be in this position. Don't think rape is just an everyday thing and that you'll become someone's punk or bitch. Okay, we hope some of you guys can add to this. How was your time in prison and can you give our viewers any tips? Please share. Yeah, any guys that were ex-cons, uh, please uh, add to this. You know, I'd like feedback from you guys. Uh, but uh, I think just the person who made this is going off of... Uh, what others have said and maybe his own thoughts on it but I can't see anybody going through uh, prison and not going to the hole at least once I, they definitely ain't going to go in Missouri they're definitely not going to go through without getting a, at least one ride up I mean if, if that's happened it, it's amazing but uh, I, I've never heard of it you know, people get rolled up for um, things they didn't even do. You know, they, they was innocent. They got right, right up. So they get, uh, they didn't know they was doing something wrong and got a right up. Um, you can get, you can get a right up for anything in prison, just about. If a guard doesn't like you, he can just slap a right up on you, you know. Who are they going to believe? You or the guard? I'll tell you who they're going to believe 99% of the time. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching. And like I said, let me hear from you. And uh, what do you all have to say about it? Bye.